Unreal Introducing Blueprints. Blueprints is a visual scripting language enabled by creating a subclass of an actor. Blueprints is both the name of the language and the thing we use within the language. Blueprints are composed of two different main concepts, both of which will be covered in this video. Graphs, which are collections of nodes, and the nodes themselves, which are defined functionality. This conclude can include a large variety of things, including function calls, variables, and other potential operations. We add nodes to graphs and connect them. This expresses control flow from one to another as a scripted sequence of functionality. We can think of the visual scripting language blueprints as similar to the use of methods and functions in other languages as one calls the next calls the next. Except in blueprints, because it is a visual language, we will connect one node to the next to the next, indicating the sequence of functionality flow from one to the other. Nodes within blueprints are not only based on type, but also have icons and colors. It is a visual scripting language. So blueprints are color coded. For example, events are in red. Notice event begin play is in red and functions are in light blue. Notice both have their own icons. The event icon, a little arrow pointing to the right and the F icon for functions. So it is a visual scripting language. Nodes can be identified based on their type, icon, and color corresponding to their functionality. So let's dig in a little bit into these two main concepts. I've mentioned nodes are color coded, but let's talk a little bit about graphs, circle back to nodes, and then we'll see this in practice in Unreal itself. So graphs are collections of nodes, and by default, each blueprint has an event graph. Now, potentially, blueprints could have access to many different graphs, many different collections of nodes, but by default, all of them have access to the event graph. This is a graph representing any events the actor can receive. And remember, of course, that these events are based on the components of the actor. The actor is the entity and its corresponding components talk to different systems. So potentially it could be many different possible events available within the event graph of any one actor. The three default events though are event begin play, event tick, and event end play available to all actors. So the beginning of play, the refreshing of things, and of course the ending of play. Now, other events can be reacted to based on their names, but they follow the keyword event. Remember, of course, this is a visual scripting language. So not only are there types and colors and icons, there's also keywords. So events have the event keyword preceding whatever the event is. Event begin play, event tick, or event in play, which would also be in red and have the icon representing the event node within the graph. So from graphs, let's move over into nodes. So nodes have two things. They have pins and they have wires. So pins are broken down into left and right size. The left side are the inputs. The right side are the outputs. Now, on either the input or the output are the two other types of pins, data and execution. So we may have information flowing from one node to the next, in which case their pins would be connected. And it might be that the output of one is the input of another. Then depending on what we're working with, we may care about their data, their type specific. And we may also be connecting various nodes together as execution, what node should run next in which order. Now, Nodes are connected between their pins using wires. This is represented as a line between the pin on one node and a line to a pin on another node. So they are connected in this way. And this signals various things depending on the nodes and the pins. It might signal input, it might signal output, it might signal execution, um, but if nothing else, it signals a relationship between them in some way. So the direction of the wire also indicates the flow of execution. So in most cases, execution moves from left to right, corresponding to the left input and right output. But there might be cases where we are directly connecting the value of something in a node into the input, handling it in a certain way, and moving it out into the output. But the wires will always indicate both the direction and the relationship between different nodes. 
Finally, pins, like the nodes themselves, are also color-coded, again, as a visual scripting language. So the output color of a pin matches the input color of another node. This helps us signal what types of data we're dealing with. We're also color-coding everything in, again, a visual scripting language. So we care about the data, which corresponds to the code, and then its execution moving from one node to the next. So finally then, let's emphasize the second word in this three-word sequence. Not only is it a visual scripting language, it's a scripting language, which means we need to compile it before we can use it. It is strongly recommended to get into the process of compiling graphs and nodes every time a new coding sequence has been put together. This will help us access things that we have added, potentially variables and functions covered in future videos, and allow us to immediately use that functionality. So we can think of this a little bit as saving it as well as giving access to the functionality to other things. So we use the visual aspect of the scripting language and then we use the scripting aspect to remember to compile our code before we can use it. So having said all that, let's move over into Unreal itself and look at this. So over in Unreal, I have already set up an existing blueprint right here. I'm also using the event graph. I've done this to help us sort of speed up this process. Now, I, this is looking at the blueprint editor right here. I have down here graphs and then event graph. I'm looking at event graph. And then I have the connection of two different nodes using their execution pins and a wire between them. So event begin play, notice it's in red and execution right here, EXEC over to EXEC. Notice the direction of the wire between these pointing from one to the other. To the other. So event begin play to print string. So when this starts, the event begin play will happen. It's an event. It will immediately transfer execution over to print string, which will print the string, print it to the screen, also print it to the log and show it in the text color with this duration. I can also feed new values into this node by correspondingly linking the output of one node to the input pins over on the left hand side of this node corresponding to their data type. Notice they're color coded. So all the colors correspond to the type correspond to their functionality. Now since I've created this, this is compiled and good to go right here, but let's say that I selected this node and deleted it. So I've made a change to this graph. Notice it now needs to be recompiled. So let's say I wanted to re-add that. I can click, left click, and drag from the execution pin out to somewhere on the graph, let go to place a new node. I want to print string, search for print, select print string, and notice that it has helpfully connected the execution pins of one node to the next. However, it still needs to be recompiled, right? It is a scripting language. So I'm going to click on compile and then my blueprint is good to go. So I'm going to minimize this and move back to Unreal. So over in Unreal, we see right here, we have our cube blueprint I have created. Notice it says edit blueprint down here and I want to play. I play, I get hello. And then it disappears after about two seconds because that's what we told it to do. So I'm going to stop. And let's move back to the blueprint. So what happened was the event begin play happened and it transferred immediately into print string, printed hello to the screen, to the log, and the color we asked for the duration we asked it to. And these were connected using the execution pins right here as part of the event graph because event begin play is an event, so it's part of the event graph. And these are two nodes, so they are part of the graph itself. So this has been a quick review of looking at these two different nodes within this graph in Unreal itself. So say I wanted to do this within a different actor. So coming back over here to Unreal, I've got my cube I set up right here. Let's over here place a different actor though. I want to place a sphere. So I'm gonna click and drag a sphere right here. Pull it up just a little bit so it's close to the floor. And so, okay. 
I have added a new actor to this level right here. It is available within the world outliner, similar to our hierarchy view within Unity. And I want to create a blueprint from this actor. So I selected it within world outliner, come down to blueprint right here, slash add script. And it asks, do we want a new subclass? And I do. Notice also, notice it's giving a blueprint name because this will be added as content to this project. And it's doing this in case we potentially in the future want to use this blueprint as part of other actors. We could define a blueprint with all of its various functionality. And then if we want to add the blueprint to a different actor to follow those same reactions or those same AI routines or whatever else we have within that blueprint. So right here, I have a sphere blueprint. It is a new subclass and I want to select this. So notice it is within the blueprint editor added a different blueprint. I have a cube blueprint and sphere blueprint right here. I also have access over here on the left-hand side to graphs, event graph, as well as right here, viewpoint, construction script, and event graph. Notice right here though, my event begin play is disabled. It's disabled because it's not connected to anything. And blueprints, particularly part of Unreal, doesn't want you to have nodes that don't do anything. So if you have nodes that are not connected, it will just disable them to prevent any issues. So let's click and drag from the execution pin of event begin play out into the graph. I will do print string again. This time, instead of hello, I will have sphere. Okay, now I have changed the nodes within this graph, so it needs to be recompiled, recompiled. Okay, so this time when the event begin play happens for this actor, it will transfer execution from this node to this node, print a string, and it will print a string sphere this time. So let's minimize this, and I want to play. We have sphere and hello. So those happened in the order that they occurred. So cube is up here, sphere is down here. We got hello and sphere stacked right here. So notice each corresponding actor got its own corresponding begin play event, which corresponded to execution flow from the execution pin of event begin play to the execution pin of in each case print string. So this gives us a glimpse into how we can script multiple actors within the same level or map to do many different things, all of which have, notice here, their own blueprints. So their own blueprints, which have their own graphs, which have their own nodes. So this video has been a quick overview of graphs and nodes within Unreal. So by creating blueprints of existing actors with Unreal, we have access to two concepts of blueprints, graphs and nodes. Graphs are just collections of nodes, and any individual node is some defined functionality. There are many different possible nodes, but they're all helpfully color-coded by type and icon, so we can very quickly see